Okay, now we need to start a new document in Corel Draw, so I'm going to call that Invitation. And if you remember, we set up a size of 250 by 80 millimeters for our invitation. I want to work in CMYK because I'm going to professional print 300 DPI therefore and I always work in enhanced mode so click OK and now we want to import so up to import OK we'll come down and select the invitation so click on the invitation you can see a preview and click import I'll then tap enter on my keyboard and that perfectly centers that import to my page now the first thing I want to do is select my rectangle tool and I'm going to just highlight the area of our little picture of the tree here. Now I've got snap to objects turned on which makes that easy so click and drag, right click to change the color to a white outline and I want the outline thickness to be more like a, a three point and we'll also put a radius on the corners of say one millimeter and that does look better as a good starting point. I want to now create a curved line along the shape of that hill to place some text on. So with my B spline tool, first of all I'll click at the starting point, then the lowest point in the valley, then the highest point on the hill, and right at the end of course. Double click. Now with my shape tool, all I need to do is pull on the control point up a little, pull down on this control point, and with very little effort we have a perfect line to the shape of the hill. Now I have some text I have already gone ahead and typed in and I'll now convert this to one of the new typefaces Helvetica well I won't try to pronounce the rest <laughs> select my text up to the text menu and choose fit text to path hover my arrow over the path and as I move of course it moves with me click and then if I'll click on the color white to make it white in color. Now I want the words hours to share to fit perfectly inside my rectangle. So what I might do is with my shape tool, I'll just increase the line, the spacing I should say between the actual letters. Just move to the right a little and we're almost there and hours to share has lined up fairly well. Not quite right here. So I'll highlight all the little nodes underneath every letter and then if I just select one I can drag back to the left just a little and look at that almost a perfect fit a little bit more so now we've got our letters hours to share sitting inside see the little comma there again select move back to the left just a little there we go and that's looking really good we'll go ahead now and add a drop shadow I'll first of all select the line right click remove the color and come over and select the drop shadow tool. Now this will really help to kick this white text off the page. So select the middle, drag, always over accentuate a little and then come back to where you think is about right. Now by lowering the feathering, say to a value of four, that sharpens the shadow. And I think what we'll do is just select all the text and use the arrow key on my keyboard to arrow up a little. Now you can see the advantage of when in photo paint we increase the contrast of the hill so the lighter area and the darker area is really helping that to stand off the page. Now I'm going to paste down some more text that I've created and again we'll shrink that down in size, pop that there, make it white in colour and again we need to choose that same typeface and we'll zoom in. I want to place an environmentally friendly picture here so I think what I'll do is select the artistic media tool, uh, choose sprayer and if we go with footprint and choose an interesting animal style footprint okay I'll click that one point size of my text is around 6 so if we come to say a value of say 12 up here click and drag and I'll make that white in color and just move it to there and then we'll make another one slightly smaller click and drag, white in colour and just place that there that kind of looks cute and really suits the image doesn't it so we'll just zoom out using F4 on my keyboard now again I've already typed some text I copied that to my clipboard so I'll paste that back down shrink that down to size and we're going to run with the typeface freehand 521 make that white in colour so a quick left click I'm using this style now of font 
because it more suits the area we're about to create, an area you can write in. All right, when you deselect on the property bar, there is an option here called duplicate distance. Now I'm going to type in some values and then I'll explain to you why I have done this. So minus four there. If I now select my freehand tool and then click finger on control to constrain to a straight line and drag, click again. Now what I'm going to do, I'll first right click and make that white in color. I'm now going to use the keyboard shortcut control D, D for dog. Now as I do, I'll do it again and again and again, you can see I have a perfect spacing between all of those lines. Well that spacing was based on the options I set here. So for X being zero, there was no left or right movement. Y being minus four means it moved in a downward distance at four millimeters downward every time I use control D. That makes that a lot easier, doesn't it? Well, I'm going to import a picture of a leaf. Click here. And this is going to add a nice touch. Now, being a bitmap, I can't really use it. So I'm going to trace, go to outline trace, and choose detailed logo. After a few seconds, we've got a great trace. And also make sure that this option here, delete original image is on. So click OK, and you'll see the original image disappear then all we have is the vector image left. So now I can fill that with a white color and I'll shrink that right down, place it right on the edge there, Z for my zoom tool, zoom in. Now I'll select the transparency tool and we'll go with a uniform transparency of the standard 50. Place that right on the edge of the line, F4 to zoom back out. That's a really nice little touch, isn't it? And to add a little more creative flair, again, I'm going to select the Artistic Media tool. This time I'm going to go with the brush, and I'm going to choose Splatter for something different. I'm going to go with a splatter here. I'm going to pop a little splatter in the corner there. Now, you're never sure what you're going to get, so if you don't like the first one, Control-Z, have another go, until you kind of get the effect that you think you might be looking for. And then that one works well. All right, so I'll select that. Again, rotate around a little. Now I'm going to add a little bit more of a splatter as well. Yeah, that looks good right there. So again, this time I'll select, I'm going to go with this one here and click and drag. There we go. Now I'll pop that down under there like that. Select the whole thing. I'm going to fill that with a white color and right click for white outline color as well. And that's just adding an, a bit of an interesting creative flair. Now for our final touches, I'm going to select the rectangle tool and click and drag, create a perfect rectangle over the outside. And I'm now going to fill that with a white color, then come down and we're going to select the mesh fill tool. Now the first thing I want to do is I want a three by three grid, so I'll just up the, the uh, grid, select all of the nodes to my mesh fill and the new transparency becomes active on the property bar. We'll adjust that to 75, deselect, then I'm going to select the node near the text, and I'm going to lower the transparency, say 30, because I want a nice white area in a moment to be behind the lines where we will actually manually write. Now to move on, I'm going to actually come up to Tools and turn on the Object Manager just to highlight how easy this makes working on a particular subject matter like this. I've already labelled a number of areas within this, but I'll show you how I did that. If I select this curve, you can see it's one of those splatters. Finger on, oh, actually I'll select the other curve. That's the other splatter. Finger on Control and I can select them both. Now right click and I can choose Group. And if I click one more time, I can then name that, and I'll name that to Splatter. Now the reason I've done this is so that you can see that as I select any one of these, I highlight that particular object or group of objects within the docker. If I now select my mesh fill, I can simply click and drag and pull it below the tree and all of a sudden the image comes to life. Of course I now have a haze over all of my background image, a nice white glow area underneath where we will type and the tree has come to life. Well, working with the object manager does make it a lot easier to work on this type of project.